Hello and welcome to another episode of ID Sports Basketball. Hello, hello, hello. We are back. You got Kilroy. You got Kevin. Hello. We're shorthanded, but it's okay. It's the Atlantic Division's previews. Um, we've done every other division. And as you all know, based off of the hat and the jerseys, we are Knicks fans, primarily here at I-80 Sports Basketball. Uh, my, uh, sorry, Tommy being the only exception as a Spurs fan. Don't forget, uh, Jeff's a Celtics fan. Oh, yeah, and Jeff, too. Uh, ironically, Tommy is the only one who lives in New York, though. That is true. So, um, we're gonna kick things off. Um, was there any news that we needed to clear up first? Uh, I don't. Weird there was only the one minor issue of some of some player naming himself the best uh, three oh, point yeah, yeah. shooting forward or big man of all later. time, but I I didn't have a chance due to Comic Con this weekend to uh, verify that he, his claim was outlandish. I uh, believe it's outlandish. I just haven't had a time to look into the numbers yet. You're talking about Kai Jones, the guy from the Hornets. Uh it else? was. Kai, jo- Kai Jones was re- re- requested a trade and then got released a couple days later. But I'm not. Yeah. I don't think I'm talking about him. So that that so Kai Jones is a Nick is related to this division kind of. That was the Knicks pick that huh. got traded for uh, Quentin Grimes and the extra first that then got flipped for um, what's his name from the Hawks. Not Trey Young. Um. Oh my brain! My brain is. He's with the Lakers right now. now, or my he was with is... the Lakers, Portland maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I forget his name. He was a Duke boy. Blanking on it, Cam Reddish. There we go. Um, yeah, the Cam Reddish trade. So Kai Jones was uh, a 2021 first round pick, and. He has been released by the Hornets because of just, I, I, I would say, you know, detrimental. Like, he's just, he he's, so clearly there's something wrong with him mentally, right? We can all, you know, say that he's not mentally healthy right now. He needs some sort of help. Uh, I'm I'm guessing here that. The, 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 that someone reached out to him about it, hopefully. Otherwise, this is, looks really bad for the Hornets. And this is new ownership for the Hornets. So the last thing that this new ownership needs is to look really bad right out the gate. But, you know, who knows? Maybe they did make bad. Maybe this is a bad decision on their behalf already. Um, and just in general, this Hornets organization has been having bad. It just hasn't been looking good all off season, And then this adds on to, added on top of it. Not looking great. I think he was a top 15 pick. Um, getting cut, you know, only two full seasons in is kind of crazy, right? Um, you also don't see crazy that, that he expressed his opinion during this time period that he was a better basketball player than his teammates Lamelo Ball and Brandon Miller. Yeah. Um, and Joan, and just just so that we're clear, Joan, uh, Kai Jones was taken number nineteen overall in twenty twenty one. Sorry, my mistake. Nineteen, top, but he's still top twenty pick. Um, you weren't you, know, you weren't far off. It was still usually a first, first round, round picks. Pick. Yeah, usually first round picks at least make it to the end of their contract. You have to be, a you know, you have to do something pretty bad to not continue to the end of your rookie contract. Uh, his on the field production was okay. On the court, sorry, was okay. He wasn't terrible. But he wasn't great. Um, but he was supposed to be a project player. He's like 21 years old. Uh, six, he's he's a he's a like a six eleven small forward. Uh, sorry, power forward, small forward combo. Maybe center, even I don't really know his full positions. And you know he was 
eventually presumably going to become the starting you know a starting piece to this team if he wasn't already i really don't know if he started i haven't i don't really follow the hornets much at all um that organization's just been really bad it's kind of embarrassing organization for a while and then i try not i don't i haven't i don't keep up there's not much you know we this this whole organization is crazy you got the whole gordon hayward situation from last year we thought he was going to get traded because they were they were playing him while he was hurt when he didn't want to play but they were forced essentially forcing him to play um that never got resolved he's still on with the organization despite his wife coming out and saying terrible things about them uh so it's it's kind of crazy uh beginning you know the and then Jordan Michael Jordan just sold the team. They drafted Brandon Ingram over Scoot Henderson, which was which was a big question about whether or not that made sense. Brandon Miller, I think. Sorry, I think I said Brandon Ingram, wrong person. Um, but in general, the, the, that organization is crazy. I know this week's about the Atlantic Division, but I just wanted to to address that um, Kai Jones situation. Hopefully, he gets the help he needs. Um, and that he has a chance to, you know, find find an opportunity to play somewhere, whether it's in the NBA or if he has to play overseas. Yeah, I mean, he's young enough. Someone should give him a chance. Um, so we shall see. Let's move on to the division here. All right, we'll kick things off with the Toronto Raptors. Um, Mongo has the Toronto Raptors going 37 and 45. Um, his only caveat here is if, you know, there's any sort of big trade, either they trade in for a player or that they trade out, you know, Pascal Siakam or OG Ananobi or whoever else is left on that team, not named Scotty Barnes. Um, and I don't, I don't really expect the Raptors to be um, good either. But what do you, what does Tommy have them at? Okay, so Tommy sent Tommy uh, sent in his picks uh, just before this episode. So these are his picks. I've confirmed them with him. Um, Tommy has the Raptors at 34 wins and 48 losses. Um, I would like to note before Kilroy gives his number that last year the Raptors were 41 wins and 41 losses somehow. Mm -hmm. That's right. They were 500. Um, and I have the Raptors going 38 and 44. Obviously, they got worse with losing Fred Van Fleet. They didn't really fix that situation. Um, this team just is a bunch of six nine, six eight guys who are talented, but not necessarily suited to be playing together. Uh, they have a, a good coach, but I just no, sorry, they fired their coach, didn't they? I don't know who their new coach is. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have much confidence in this team. I do expect someone to be traded at some point. My guess is it's going to be OG Ananobi, uh, just because he is, uh, because Pascal Siakam's contract, I think, is too big. I think OG's is, uh, is uh, a little bit easier to trade. Um, and they just have too many. They have such a, 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 a block at that. Four, three, four combo guard, uh, combo forward with OG, Pascal, conglomerate, you say? Barnes. Um, they traded Precious Anua, but he was there at one point. You know, it's just hard to tell who who's um who who who's able to 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 do this and who who can't Hi. for this team. Hi. My son wants to come in and give his his opinion about the Toronto Raptors. So he's got his dinosaur shirt on too. Uh, he <laughs> thinks the Toronto Raptors are going to be bad as well. Right, Aaron? The Raptors are going to be bad? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't expect them to do to do well. I do expect them to make some sort of trade. Uh, I think 38 wins for me, 37 for Mongo, and Tommy's 34 are all relatively close. That I, I If they break 40, I think they ha they go out and make a huge trade something unexpected like going out and getting James Harden. Don't worry. I don't I don't expect James Harden to go north of the border. Um since since Kilroy was unable to pronounce uh this head coach's name, I'm going to give it a shot. 
Otherwise, if I mispronounce it, apologies to Mr. Darko Rahakovic. Oh, bless that you. That is your Toronto Raptors head coach who replaced Nick Nurse in the offseason. Uh, Mr. Rahakovic, if we if I mispronounce your last name, I'm sorry. This is the, uh, I have not, not heard it pronounced before. Anywho, my number is the same as Tommy's. I've got them at 34 wins. Uh, somebody has to be a bottom feeder in this division, and I believe that would be the Raptors. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I, 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 uh, I, I thought I graded pretty hard, hard on these the teams. Well, you'll see my the rest of my division is pretty tough. Um, okay. But yeah, uh, not everyone. But I was tough on one particular team that I don't think anyone else was hard on. Are we moving on to uh, Brooklyn? Yeah, let's move on to Brooklyn. Um, Mongo has the Nets going 43 and 39. He has no notes whatsoever about them, but I'm not surprised about that. Um, this team was a good team last year. What was their record last year? 45 wins and 37 losses. That makes sense. They're, they're, they didn't, you know, again, this division is getting better in certain aspects and worse in others. Um, they just the whole basketball is. I think t- docking two wins from them makes sense to me. Um, Kevin, what does Tommy have them at? Tommy has them at 36 wins and 46 losses. It's a, it seems like a steep drop from 45 wins a year ago, but I'm sure, I'm sure that, um, there, that there's like, there's going to be a little bit of drop off from last year because there could be a possibility that the Nets overachieved in some spots and they might come back to earth a little bit this season. Um, I have them going 43 and 39 as well as Mon- same as Mongo. I actually, uh, 40, sorry, 40, yeah, 43 and 39. I think that that's, that's a bit of a, is, that drop off is fine. Um, they are expecting Ben Simmons back. Uh, so, you know, some, some, those are the, not trying to be mean to him, but he, you know, golly, I, he's just going to ruin team chemistry enough, I think, to knock off a few wins. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I'll go next. I I have I have the Brooklyn Nets at 39 and 43. I think that until they resolve the Ben Simmons issue, I don't really see them going too much of anywhere. Maybe they'll sneak in a sp- maybe they'll sneak into the 10th seed if they're lucky, but I kind of, I kind of doubt that and they're not in my in my opinion like whether they're the 10th seed or out they're not really going to make any noise as a true legitimate playoff contender until Ben Simmons is gone from this team because you just cannot depend on this guy. Not even just Ben Simmons. They don't have a true star yet on that team either. Right? Like, that team got depleted of all their stardom. Yeah. In a, in a crazy fashion. This this team burned. I feel like this team dropped off faster than the Kevin Garnett trade team that they had you mean when kevin garnett tra- was traded to the nets yes okay from like the, Celtics. the expectation okay. i just want to for... clarify that for the viewers and... yeah yeah the i feel like the this team just dropped off the face of the earth after this kevin durant kyrie irving james harden fiasco um it's crazy that not a single one of them still remains on this roster like they couldn't even keep one of the stars like and- that's just mind-blowing to me and here's the crazy part about that trio. That trio had all of one playoff series win. That's the that's the most amazing part to me. Didn't they only play like they played like 30 games together? Some ridiculously low number together. I thought it, I thought it was even less than 30. I thought it was in the teens. I'm gonna look that up. That, uh, that's 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 just only makes it worse. Like yeah. they they spent so many assets. Um, this team's going. It's gonna be tough for this team to to rebuild from that i think that this team will stay as a bottom of the like you know the east for a few more years at least while they try to recuperate um assets and stuff like that they have gotten some back in the kevin durant trade but phoenix is projected to be a good team for a while so you know how valuable are those picks that they got are they going to be able to package thing anything together to go out and get someone will they go out and get uh, a carl anthony towns can they uh, I doubt that they'll be able to get um, Joel B just because I don't see the Sixers trading in division. And if they're going to trade in division, it will probably be to the Knicks just because the Knicks have more valuable assets 
than barely, but they have more valuable assets than the Nets. But I expect I expect the, the 76ers, if they do trade Joel Embiid, to send him out west. Um, basically, the answer, by the way, and for those of you who want to fact check me, they played a grand total of 16 games together, the three of them. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah. So it wasn't even they didn't even make it to 30 games together. That's that's how that's how bad it was. And uh yeah, and I don't know. I still think I still believe enough in this Nets team that they'll be able to scrape. I, I don't think 43 wins is a lot. I we're we're all relatively close, right? We're all within four wins of each other. I mean, uh, Mago except said 43 for, except, and well, said Tommy and Ta- Sorry, five. Uh, yeah. Tommy's seven games back of you and Mongo, but I'm four games back. It's not, I don't think, um, in, in, like, it seems like a big spread, but in all reality, I think we're all on the same page that the Nets, I think the Nets are a scrappy team and they'll steal wins from play from teams that are not paying attention, but I don't necessarily see them making a whole lot of noise come playoff time if they even make it to the playoffs. I think. I think you are wrong about Tommy's. I know you asked him. He said he, take off three wins from his uh, immediate from his Nets prediction. Oh, I didn't see that part. Got it. Yeah. That so seems silly. just I don't, so okay. just so just so we were aware, um, he did he did initially have them as thirty nine wins before the tr- before some big trades came out, and then uh, he was able to take three wins away from the Nets and put three wins toward another team in this division. That is not the team I would have taken them from. It's okay. I mean, like, he already had a low number for the Raptors, so. Not the team I would have taken from either. Uh, I think, well, anyway, we'll talk about that right now. Moving on to the 76ers. Uh, Mongo has the Sixers at 48 and 34. Uh, He is fully aware that this is a wild card. Uh, we have no idea what's going to happen. Is James Harden going to get traded? Is well, Embiid going to get traded? Are they going to blow everything up? Is uh, Daniel Morey the worst GM in the history of basketball? He ruined the Rockets, and he's looking in the process of ruining the 76ers as well. Who knows? Uh, the Rockets are finally rebuilding mm, and, and going in the right direction. The Sixers are still stuck with Morey for at least till the owner realizes he made a mistake. Um, and, and, and fires him, which who knows when that's going to be. Uh, but boy, howdy, I, I, this, the Sixers team is in a, it's crazy. What is, what does Tommy have them going? Tommy's got your, Tommy's got the 76ers at 46 wins and 36 losses. Okay. Let's hear yours because mine, like I said, I, I graded pretty harsh. So I think I should end my, okay. be the last one to say my 76ers. All right. So I had the 76ers at 50 wins and 32 losses. The reason, oh, and by the way, uh, for full disclosure, last year they had 54 wins. So for in terms in terms of thinking through what they have right now, even, e- even though James Harden is not likely to play for them, I still believe uh, Joel Embiid is good enough to lead them to a 50-win season, even, even if he's the only star there. So I do believe... That and whatever trade, whatever little assets that they'll they might be able to get back from any potential Harden deal would only help them, I think, reach 50 wins. I just don't think I so that's why I locked them in at 50 wins. I just I just don't see them as a championship level contender unless they get the Harden uh issue resolved. Right now, they're clearly not a championship team with him. And they're not a championship team if they don't if they just pin him to the bench. Um, so that's where that's where I stand on the Sixers. Okay, I, I I'm I'm being very harsh on them. I have them in 41 and 41. Um, I think that okay. it's not out of the realm of possibility that you see both Harden and Joel Embiid on different teams come to the trade deadline. Definitely, James Harden is going to be gone. If if the Sixers want any hope of this season being close to 50 wins like you were talking about, they need to move hard in before the season starts. They need to just accept this trade that the Clippers offered, which was reasonable. It was first-round pick, pick swaps, and some other 
stuff, nothing too fancy, but it's, it's enough that, uh, you know, salary fillers or whatever to make it work salary wise. Cause you know, those NBA trades love to trade those kind of contracts, right? Uh, it was expiring contracts was what it said. Um, I, first off, Sixers should jump on that. They get the expired contract off the books. Though, granted, James Harden's contract will be off the books anyway at the end of the year. He's a free agent again. He only upped for one year. Um, But they should take whatever they can. I don't see – no one seems interested enough in him right now to offer more than, than Nor that. Nor should they. <laughs> right. I, I have a funny story about Harden, actually. I don't know if we covered this. I don't remember if we covered this yet, but basically Harden was uh, talking to the Houston Rockets earlier in the summer before he signed, we upped with the 76ers. And he won. He, there was, there was interest in the Rockets from bringing James Harden back in their conversations with James Harden. He said that he wants to go back to being uh, an MVP top 10 scoring player of the, of the league. And uh, the Houston Rockets uh, didn't want any part of that. And that's why they ended up eventually yeah. passing on James Harden. Which makes sense for the Rockets. That's not where this Rockets team is. I don't think Fred Van Fleet was the correct replacement. Um, I think they should have just kept young and, and hoped for someone better maybe in the future. Um, but, oh, uh, I changed my Rockets win total, people. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Uh, what did I say? How many wins I'm taking off? All of them. Um, <laughs> you had I was them at 41 last episode. I was expecting a bit of more maturity from, uh, what's his name? The guy they got from the Grizzlies. I thought Ami, Ami Aduka was going to be able to make him more mature. And immediately in the first game, he nuts punches someone as a, in a play in a, a preseason game. So, Oh, a Dylan Brooks. Yeah. I was expecting him to mature a bit, figure, oh, He's no longer in Memphis. He's he's going to be able to mature. Uh, he's got a good coach who's who should be able to help him. I mean, he's very good at that. He's a very good coach. He's which makes me wonder why is Dylan. If Dylan, this is already how Dylan Brooks is acting, why is he on this roster? He's not gonna. He's not gonna fit in. Um, that may be a timeline issue. It might have been they. Uh, it might have been uh, they signed Dylan Brooks like too quickly after they got Yudoka. Hmm. That's fair. And it could be. And here's the thing also. Yudoka is like, it seems to me that Yudoka was a teaching style coach. So there, maybe the organization and Yudoka held, held out a little bit of hope that they could, um, you know, uh, reform Mr. Dylan Brooks. I, I thought so too, which is why I, I, I use that as a way to give them some extra wins. Because he's a very good player when he is not being a, an idiot and getting suspended. Uh, for punching people in the in, in the family jewels. <laughs> um, so what's your new number then for the Houston Rockets so that the viewers can follow along? I will take them down to, what did I, I had 41 wins. I will put yeah. them at uh, 36. I'll take those five and spr sprinkle them evenly across the rest of the division. Sprinkle them evenly, you've got four other teams. That'll be an interesting division for you. One of them's getting two. Um, yeah, it will, we'll give the second one to the team I had in first, whoever that was. Okay. We'll actually, you know what? We'll give two to the Mavericks and one to everyone else. Okay. Um, but yeah, so back to the Sixers real quick. Um, uh, I still feel that the Sixers are not even close, even with, so here's the thing. If you keep James Harden on this team, He's clearly going to not play up to snuff. We saw this with the Nets. We saw this with the with the the the, the Rockets. The Rockets. At the end of his tenure, he did do this as well. Right. So even if he's even if we're not getting fat fat James Harden, we're getting James Harden. You're going to get loafing want, James Harden. Yeah. He, who doesn't want to play? He's come out and said, and he said he this this relationship between him and Maury is is irreconcilable. So what what is what are you waiting for? Like you're not getting any you're not getting any value in in trading him ever, like at all. Like you 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 by not by by lying to him or allegedly lying to him, saying that you were going to sign him and trade him immediately or you know as soon as possible, um, and then not doing anything months 
we're, we're 10 days away from the season starting and you haven't moved him and you, you're not even actively shopping him, right? Like there, there, there could have been something done. The Knicks were allegedly interested. I'm glad the Knicks did Thank not go in on him. Didn't get him. Um, but in general, this is just a bad look for the Sixers. And and Joel Embiid is not going to be able to stay healthy. When was the last time Joel played a full of like enough of a you know? And and now he's without James Hart. Going to be without James Harden full full time. Tobias Harris is not really great. Max Ezok is is a uh, uh, up and comer and is going to be good. I, this team is just Joel Embiid at this point. And eventually it's going to, you know, break him down uh, physically and mentally. And I think eventually you're going to just see him demand a trade, especially once James Harden's gone. And they probably won't get any talented player in return. It is just going to be for essentially a first round pick and pick swaps. I have your Joel Embiid answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In his nine seasons... Uh, the highest number of games he played in any of the seasons was 2021-2022 when he played 68 games. So there you go. I don't know. I think 41 wins is reasonable. I mean, if 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 something changes, like they can they get do get someone else in a trade, I obviously think that they you know, will exceed that. I don't think that they'll go below it. I think something catastrophic would have to happen for them to be below 500. We must not overlook the fact that I don't it, I don't think the damage in the 76ers was all the organization's fault. The the NBA did find James Harden over his comments uh about mm-hmm. the organization and Mr. Morey. So, it's not it's not ju- it's not just it's, so it, Harden's not like an innocent angel over here in the entire situation, not by any means whatsoever. So I just Which want to make sure that be hard to point carry. out. Like he's been burning his, he burned his bridges everywhere he's been. How it's, it's so hard to trade him. The only reason the Clippers are interested is because they got Kawhi Leonard and Paul George <laughs> who are friends with him. They're you. Well, the thing is they're used to having injury riddled players. So yeah. they don't see, they don't, they, they do. They wouldn't mind taking out another injury riddled player. It's the norm for the Clippers, but and he I gets think, to be that offensive player. He wants to be right. Cause they don't, they, they, they can, they, they won't be playing as much so he can go score 40 points a game, you know, and they'll lose. But the yeah. funny thing is that I think in this situation where, I think the organization, the reason they they didn't move on the Clippers deal or any other deals that might have offered is they're still holding out to that little thin stretch of hope that uh, they acquire an all-star player in return, which I don't see anyone in their right mind doing that. Uh, does Terry, does uh, Terry Rozier count? Nope. I, uh, I, I I don't even remember the last time Terry Rozier was an All Star. I don't think he ever was. <laughs> um, maybe he was like an All Star replacement at best. But yeah, I don't see it happening. Their best chance was with the Knicks and the Clippers trade, where the Knicks were getting Paul George. I I actually don't even understand how that trade was working. The Knicks were getting Paul George, which is fine. Who are the Sixers getting from that trade? <laughs> just, well, just draft picks? It didn't happen, so it's moot for the moment. That's Maybe fair. if there's time later on, I'll take a gander to see if I can find that. But that's 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 over and done with for the Sixers. I agree right. with you that they should try to trade Harden as soon as they can, but I don't think I think the biggest problem is now. I don't think anybody's willing to trade for him now. I think they're willing to wait it out till either the deadline or you know what? He's going to be a free agent. When we, why, why would we? Why should we trade for him? Let's let's wait till he becomes a free agent. The Clippers will be desperate enough. The Clippers will pull the trade off at some point. But will they pull it off for Harden? That's that's I'm 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 looking at. Oh the no, I I think that I meant for Harden. I think they will trade for Harden. I think that they just won't. It won't be anything. I think it will be a first round pick and pick swaps and and you know expiring contracts. I don't think it's going to be anything more than that. Maybe they'll throw in a a, a conditional second first round pick not a second round pick us an additional first round pick that's conditional 
Okay. We'll keep an eye on those. As the season progresses, we're going to keep an eye on those developments and we'll tell you all about that. Before we move on, that's part of my reasoning, by the way, of why I think the Sixers are going to be bad is James Harden's not going to get traded before the season. He's going to be there. He's going to cause problems in the locker room and it's going to be tough for the team to over to overcome it. That's all. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to be a hater here. On to the Boston Celtics. Uh, I think, for the most part, I'm not sure about you. Um, we all have the Celtics winning the division. Okay. Mongo has the Celtics going 53 and 29. Okay. Um, what about Tommy? I mean, I know he. he Tom, we, Tommy has this. them at 56 and 26. Yep. Um, and he said, undecided if Przingis makes this team better or worse. Now, I think he said this. He, now, in, this was a screenshot, and he took this screenshot before the Celtics traded away Marcus Smart and got back. Um, oh, no, he, I think Marcus it was Smart. after they traded Marcus Smart, but before they got Drew Holiday. Yeah, Marcus Smart was part of the Przingis trade. Yeah. So yeah. I believe he would not have said the same comment after the Drew Holiday trade. Um, I will say this. My win total is before the Drew Holiday trade. I did not adjust it. I have them at 52 and 30. Um, I think this Drew Holiday trade affects that. Um, not significantly enough that if I would I would give them like... I'm not docking them. And I'm, I think keep. I, I'll still keep them at 52 wins. I think that the, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve. But once he starts, once the team gets into... In motion, it's going to be fine. They'll rebound. Maybe not literally rebound because their team is a bunch of old centers, but you know, no, <laughs> they'll they'll rebound. Um, I still think that this team is going to win the division. I have so all right. I'll say this: the Knicks had a very good chance at winning this division had they been a bit more aggressive in packaging pieces together to go out and get someone. I'm not sure who there were people available. Paul George was apparently on the table for the Knicks. I get it that they didn't want to give up, you know, so much for an older guy who's injury prone. I do understand that, but not just him. I mean, in general, the, the Knicks have been talking about going out and getting another player for a while. They have these assets. They're not great assets. These I, We're being lied to about the fact that they have, you know, all this draft capital. A lot of it's bad, and not, not tradable. And that's why they're stuck not being able to move and get this other player, but they needed to strike while the iron was hot, and they didn't. The Celtics did. I don't think the I don't think the uh, iron was ever hot for the Knicks. I I was looking the around at the players out there, and it just didn't seem like it. Like, I mean, the, there could have there could have been a trade made for the players, but I don't necessarily think the Knicks were wrong in not pulling the trigger. I 100% think they're wrong because the fact that this team did not get any better. I do. I mean, I I think my record is better than they were last year. But bringing in uh, DiVincenzo was the big addition, right? What else did they do? They re-signed Josh Hart, which I think was great. I liked that re-signing. You have Emmanuel Quickly, who everyone's talking about. Well, anyway, we'll get to the Knicks when we talk about the Knicks. What's your Celtics prediction? Okay, so this is this is be clear. Last year, the Boston Celtics were 57 and 25. And when I did this, I initially had them at 50 wins. This was after the, the because I thought that uh, the, um, what's his name? Kristaps Porzingis trade would bring them down a little bit because he's injured a lot and he will miss quite a few games. And I also thought that it would take time for them to gel. However, and I did not have the Celtics winning the division at 50 games uh, because of all the hellabaloo. However, after the Drew Holiday trade, I don't see either the Knicks or the Sixers having enough to pass the Celtics. So m- the only adjustment I made, I gave the Celtics one additional win at 51 wins and made them my my division winner. Um, yeah, well, I, I think we can all agree that bringing Drew Holiday made this team that much I, better. I do, however, think it's still going to take them time to get together. And I do not believe that even with Drew Holiday that they're going to reach – their 57 win total from last year. It just, it just, they'd have to play extremely out of their minds, I think, to do so. And I just don't see that happening. And just in general, other teams, you know, are better. The, no one's tanking for, for Victor Wimanyama. Um, 
just the 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 wins from last year were a little bit wonky for every team. Um, all right, let's move on to the Knicks uh, because I, I was I was talking about them. I have them going. Uh, let's see, Mongo has them forty nine and thirty three. Tommy has Tom, them at Tommy? fifty and thirty two. Uh, I have them at forty nine and thirty three as well as Mongo. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what's funny, Kilroy? I have them at fifty and thirty two. So we're all within a win of each other, right? And that's my point. I I know I'm saying bad, but that's my point. They're so close to being as good as the Celtics that if they went, if they did the true true holiday trade instead, mm-hmm. and they were in conversations for it, they didn't. Obviously, that that I think that there is behind the scene things that we didn't know hear about because. Drew Holiday getting flipped immediately to the Celtics a day or two after the other trade. Uh, the, Porz- the Porzingis, the, Marcus Smart trade? No, no. The the Drew Holiday going to Portland. Oh, the Lillard. The Lillard trade. Lillard trade, yeah. And then immediately getting shipped to the Celtics. I think there was some back-channel talking. Because the Knicks, the Knicks are a slow team. The Knicks, we know that they're very, very slow and methodical with doing the trades. That's why... The Cleveland Cavaliers thing fell through. That's why the 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 Paul George thing fell through. That's why all the trades fall through. Is the Knicks are very slow and methodical with their trades. They don't want to just do a trade. They want to make sure they're getting the value that they feel is is in return, which is great. You don't want to just throw everything away. We used to do that all the time, and that's how we ended up with Eddie Curry. (laughs) So I am happy that the Knicks are really are, are trying to be smarter with their trades. But at the same time, they've had opportunities. Last offseason, they had a chance to get uh, 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 Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. And, decided, and they may no, have a chance after this offseason. Don't forget. He becomes right. a free agent. And he's not – He's rumors are he's not going to resign in Cleveland. And he wants to be a Nick. So the odds are of him being a Nick is high other than the fact that Knicks don't have salary cap. Uh, they have to figure that out. And a glut of guards, right? Well, so obviously the so here's a th- so I know you love Emmanuel quickly, and I think he is a good player, but he does not fit on this roster. Unfortunately, he's not starting. That's not the only problem. He also wants to start his own team eventually. Right. He wants to be a starter. He's currently the sixth man. It's not. He's not going to beat out Quentin Grimes. He just they play two totally different styles. Um. And with Brunson and quickly, it's too small in the backcourt. Right. And, you know, the, and, and they just, the Knicks don't want to do that. You're not going to pay your sixth man $100 million to come off the bench. You're not. You're just not. It makes no sense for the Knicks to pay him that money. Uh, everything I read on the internet is, oh, from Knicks fans is, oh, the Knicks got to extend quickly. They got to extend quickly. Yes. I, I like quickly as a player. I think he's very good. I don't think the Knicks, I think. I, I think the Knicks need to move him so that he can go get his best chance at being a star in the NBA. Get him a chance to be a starter somewhere. He's not going to be able to start with the Knicks, he, and, and especially seeing Brunson, let's be honest, once he's eligible for an extension, is probably going to get one. Yeah. he He's not moving anytime soon. So that, that spot's never opening for him with the Knicks. Ship him out while he still has value, while you can still get some good value in return. Maybe package him together. Go get someone. Don't go get Carl Anthony Towns for the love of God. And that's the guy that I was talking about earlier. I don't want him. I don't want him. I used to want him. Not for that, but for the the quote that he said that he was supposedly the best three-point shooting big man in the league. That was the one you sent uh, earlier this week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't had a chance to look up the numbers, but I'm pretty sure he's uh, blowing hot air on that issue. I Don't get me wrong. I used to love Carl Anthony Towns. The past few seasons have made me sour a bit on him in in the sense that he doesn't have that killer instinct. He doesn't he doesn't seem to be have that it factor. He seems to be a good player who relies on his his just being better than physically better than everyone, not necessarily able to hone his skills to be the best that he can be. Uh, not that the Knicks have tons of players like that but that's they're they're few and far between in the nba but in general for what the, what it will cost the knicks to get him he's he's not that he's not to me he's not there obviously you have to trade mitchell robinson in that deal which is fine i think i they i should. like mitchell robinson i don't mind moving on from him 
he's a lot of money for a a, a defensive player. Yeah. Right. He's he's obviously not Rudy Gobert. Can't shoot free throws, by the way. Right. Um, he's you know, so I don't mind moving on from him. Jericho Sims is a perfectly fine replacement for him. Uh, I'm not sure if I want Carl Anthony Towns and and Julius Randle playing together. I'd rather just no. have Julius Randle. I'm and that's I, I am trending back in the positive with Julius Randle. I think bringing in Carl Anthony Towns would make him would, would worsen him, right? Because they're both kind of a similar player. They're the same. They're the same. They're pretty much the same kind of player. Uh, not very not very strong defensively, at least in my opinion. Uh, like very shaky from distance shooting and like they, they're, they both, they, they both seem to play like the ball in your hands type player at the four that I don't think the Knicks should have two of the same player in the starting lineup on the same team. And that was the reason that they said that they shouldn't go get Paul George. So why would you go get Carl Anthony Towns? Oh, if Paul George would be a much better fit than Carl Anthony Towns. Absolutely. Except like, with yeah, all those would, injuries. Would, would, would the Knicks have most likely had to lose R.J. Barrett in that trade? Probably. I love R.J. I would like them to keep him. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to reach his ceiling with this Knicks team. Uh, We'll see. I, I think he's a good player. I don't want to move on from him. I, let me, let me, I do not want to move on from R.J. I would like to keep R. I I actually like the starting five outside of... Robin, Robinson. Mitchell Robinson. Um... I'm not sure who they can go out and get to be a better center is the problem. Uh, could they upgrade over quick over, sorry, over Grimes? Absolutely. I'm just not sure who I like Grimes. I think he's a good, I think he fits the Knicks mentality. Yeah. Um, so I want to, I want to say that this have, about that the they, Knicks that, uh, hmm. players like Drew holiday was one of the few players linked to the Knicks that I actually thought they could and should get. But I was having a hard time figuring out which pieces on the team you'd have to trade away to get him. Because if they had gotten Drew Holiday, there would have been a log jam at the one, two, and three positions. Because well, now, it would because have, now you've have got, to trade it quickly. Yeah. Probably Robinson. Oh, Robinson, I'm fine with getting rid of. I, I, I don't care. I, I, I'm fine with getting rid of him. There would have probably had to been another trade that would have gotten the Knicks a big in return. Probably. But um, I mean, like, the path for the Knicks to getting Drew Holiday wasn't as e wasn't as easy as it I think it would have been normally because mm -hmm. they, they have they have so many they have so many guard like players on that team that I just didn't like if they had gotten Drew Holiday, they would have had to make either within the same trade or a trade shortly thereafter a team to address a, a trade to get rid of the glut. So I think they still have to do that. They have that problem anyway. Oh, they still do. But Drew Holiday would have made it worse. Right. Like you have that with you have currently coming off the bat. Like, and is quickly even going to be the sixth man, right? Because you have Dante Di Vincenzo, you have Josh Hart. You know, I, I know Josh Hart plays the, the the three, can play the three, but he's undersized. He's six four. Let's 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 not let's not let, let's not you know sell ourselves short or you know or uh, make it out to be as though this guy is a giant as well uh they they have a relatively small back confirmed bench. by a wikipedia by the way um and i don't i i understand the wanting to bring in dante v D vincenzo he's friends with josh hart he's friends with uh, jo okay. uh jalen brunson and uh the other guy rj barrett no no the other the other guy from from uh, from Villanova, he's back on the team. I think for some reason, <laughs> the guy they traded to Portland. He's, he, I think he's somehow back with the Knicks. I'm drawing a blank. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find this. Uh, and uh, they want the other guy too, but they're not gonna be able to get him. He's with the Nets, right? Is I mean, Bridges? the only other the only other player I could think of is it Bridges the guy I'm is Bridges from the Villanova. I'm drawing a blank. I'm. I'm going to. I, I'm. I'm looking this up. Give me a second. Oh God, okay. I clicked the wrong. Whatever. Uh, it, it. In the meantime, though, uh, I would like to. I would like to go back to my 
50 number. Yeah, uh, Mikael Bridges. The Nets are not trading Mikael Bridges through yeah, the Knicks. They're not. So I just I thought that prior to the um, Drew Holiday trade, that the Knicks did have enough to win the division in a three-way tiebreaker with the Celtics and the Sixers. I did. I thought the Celtics had dropped far enough that prior to Drew Holiday, they could win the division. Because my initial calculations, and I did send a picture of them to the text group so they can confirm this, I did have a three-way tie with the Knicks winning the, div- the division after the Drew Holiday trade. I just don't see the Celtics falling all the way down to where the Knicks... Who, by the way, just a spoiler, just as a, just so you guys don't forget, the Knicks won 47 games last year. So my guess of 50 wins for them is an improvement from last year. And I thought that before the Drew Holiday trade, that was enough to win the division. With the Drew Holiday trade, no, it's not. So I just wanted to yeah. throw that out there in case uh, people are wondering. Uh, time will tell. I uh, I still I exp- I'm not. I don't even think I expect the Knicks to do a trade this year. I I mean, other than maybe trying to figure out a way to move on, move quickly, but other than moving quickly and maybe trading for an EA, um, I don't know. I don't. No one wants Evan Fournier. We'll see. We'll let let's let's um let's wait for the trade deadline and let's see what cooks up. You never know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, if a big an expect like the Knicks could end up if if the Cavs just fall off, the Knicks could end up getting a a great bargain deal on uh, on uh, Donovan Mitchell. I don't expect that. I I just don't want this to be a situation where. They trade for Donovan Mitchell just like they traded for Carmelo Anthony, and they gut the team to for the trade. I don't think they that's have to gut the, the team. That's the thing that I'm worried about. I think they got Evan Fournier. They can trade and quickly, plus the draft capital, maybe a few other, you know, whatever player yeah. pieces here and there to fill the the, the salary. I mean, uh, no offense, I'm not heartbroken if we have to trade Dante Divincenzo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dante, you're not, you're not, you know, Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> but I'm just saying that, like, the reason right. you just don't gut the team like you did yeah. with, with the the mellow thing. But the, the mellow thing was just a different, totally different situation. Yeah. Um, like anyway. I wasn't, I wasn't against acquiring Carmelo Anthony, but I was, I was uh, at the time, I was, uh, like, he's he wants to come here, he's gonna come here, wait four months. You'll still have you'll still have all these players, and then you add Carmelo Anthony. I think that team would have done far better than what they did with Carmelo Anthony after the trade. My only my only thing is this: the Knicks. Sh- so the only thing is this: if they did what you're talking about, they needed to trade Wilson Chandler and Danilo Danilo Gallinari anyway, because they both played the small forward, which is what at the time Carmelo Anthony was playing. But I didn't think they needed to trade both of them. Plus, I I, I think they traded two other no, no. players. The trade year. was ridiculous. They gave up way too much to yeah. get Carmelo. My point is, if they brought in, or they were able to sign Carmelo right in for agency instead. Yeah. Well, you have to trade both of those guys away anyway to fill out the rest of your team. Well, not necessarily. I think they could have kept one as a backup. I I do agree. One would have to go, but I thought one I thought one could stay as a backup because I didn't think they were starter level players anyway and it seems like time has pretty much proven they weren't starter level well, players Wilson Chandler's not in the NBA anymore <laughs> and Gallinari's recovering from injury um as usual it seems not like. usual that's that's the wrong European <laughs> <laughs> wrong wrong uh six uh six ten plus big European big the Knicks drafted in the top ten <laughs> um, <laughs> It's okay. We'll 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 straighten out the story at some point. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Remember, like, share, subscribe, comment down below your uh, prediction for this division and why the Knicks are definitely <laughs> going to be the second best team in this division. Uh, we will catch it next time if I can find the button. There we go.
don't want to forget the WNBA. New York Liberty won game three, 87-73. They now trail the best of five series two games to one. I was going to say that too. Come on, Liberty. Bring New York a championship.